Praise the Lord. Happy, victorious young people in our generation. Praise the Lord. The Lord is here for you. And you are here for the Lord. And everything the Lord needs to do, has to do in your life, in your profession, and in everything concerning you, the Lord will do at this time in Jesus' name. Impact. Impact. Transformed to lead. And I believe that is why you are here. The Lord is going to take hold of your life, transform your life, prepare you for leadership in your life in Jesus' name. For all of us here and those online and those in every country connected, something good will happen to you. It will transform your life, impact your life, change your life. And then whatever things are there that will hinder you from getting to that place the Lord has ordained and created you for, it will cleanse you. It will change you. It will set you free. It will set me free. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you at this time. We bless your name because of your love, your grace, your goodness for everyone. We're praying, Lord, that from tonight, none of us here or there in any country will miss your grace and your goodness in Jesus' name. Lord, arise for everyone. Destroy anything that will stand in the way of anyone to be who you have called them to be in Jesus' name. Bless men, women, boys, girls, people inside, people outside, everyone. Bless us together in a very special in a very specific and definite way in Jesus' name. We well, thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. We'll see the answer in every life. In Jesus' name, I pray. God bless you. You can sit down. As you know already, we're here for impact. As you know, you in particular, you are here for impact. You are here for transformation. That the Lord will so transform your life and he'll put your feet, your mind, he'll put your focus on the path to lead. I will lead. I will lead. Now I'm going to do something peculiar with you. I'm going to start with A. B, C, D, and E. And then tomorrow, I'll come to F, G, H, I, J. And then for the following message, I'll come to K, L, M, N, O. Then the next message, I'm going to come to P, Q, R, S T and then the final message when I run through everything you'll never be the same again the final message I'll be coming to you V W X Y and Z and that Z will take you from a zero to a hero and you'll get to the zenith of your life in Jesus' name. Now, A, B, C, D, E. Awakened beneficiaries cultivating delightful excellence. The Lord wakes us up 
what can you do? You've been sleeping all the night, and then you want to get something done in the day. What do you do? You awake. And you need to wake up in your soul, in your mind, in your life, in your body. And everything within you will have to awake. And then you want to go through life. And now here, I'm at school. I'm at work. I'm in the office. You want to be a person that are taking something from the benefactor. And he blesses your life so that you can be a blessing to other people. The Lord makes you to be a beneficiary. Show me any man that gets to the top, any woman that gets to the top, he has benefited from life, from mother, from, ma from father. He's benefited from uh, teachers and schools. He's benefited from learning. And then he takes what he has learned to be a benefit to other people. Show me anyone that is transformed. And that person transformed comes to life and he says, I have something to offer my community. I have something to offer my generation. That fellow is a cultivated fellow. He's called cultivated, you might have the natural skill and the natural talent and the natural ability. You cultivate that. Look at that seed in the hand of a farmer. He has to cultivate that. He has to sow that and plant that. Cultivate and bring forth fruit. Look at the one that wants to feed our nation. He wants to feed our community. You know what he does? He has to cultivate and it is that cultivation and the more you cultivate, that's why you are going to bless the people more. And the person who cultivates and is a blessing to people and is leading people, he delights in people. He loves people. You know, if you go through life cranky, angry. If you go through life, it's like, you know, they need to give me this. And you're not delighted in giving anyone anything. You will not be able to go there. Leading is not just uh, having dominion over people. Leading is going in front, and then the people are following. You are delightful, delightsome, and then uh, anyone going to do any good in any life, any country, anywhere, he has to aim at excellence himself. He wants to be excellent. And the people around him, he wants them to excel. He's a teacher. He wants the students to excel as a leader. He wants the followers to excel. He is a person in society, and he wants to make that society an excellent society. That's why I come to you to begin our impact of this time, awakening beneficiaries, cultivating delightful excellence. Look, look with me at Isaiah chapter 52. And I'm reading from verse 1. Isaiah chapter 52, reading from verse 1. Awake. Awake is telling those of us who are asleep, who are slumbering, where in life we do not know we have something to do that no other man, no other woman can do. We have something to do that no other boy, no other girl can do. And we've been sleeping. The brain is sleeping. The mind is sleeping. The vision is sleeping. There's no vision. There's no focus. We close our eyes. We close our minds. And we're sleeping. And it says, you came to the world not to sleep. You came to the world, not just to lie down there, helplessly doing nothing for nobody. But it says, awake, awake, put on thy strength. Now, when you're awake, you have to know that there's something to do. And that thing to do in life will demand strength. It says, awake. And as if, mommy said, wake up. 
And then she goes to her room and came back five minutes after, ten minutes after, the boy, the girl is still sleeping. And so the second time mommy said, awake, life is not for sleeping. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments. So you don't want to go out into society without wearing that garment. And spiritually and professionally, you don't want to go to life and to the office and to your place of work. Just go in there empty, naked, no clothes on you. The clothes and the garment of strength and of courage and of power, and for you to understand, you are dressed for work. You are dressed for transformation. You are dressed to do something in life. You are dressed so that you will achieve. You will achieve. All the dress we need, the garment of courage, of strength, of conviction, a principle that we need that will make us stand confident in the world we go. He says, put on thy strength, O Jerusalem, the holy city, for henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. And then he tells us in verse 2, he says in verse 2, shake thyself from the doors, when you put um, the best of weapons, you put it on the ground, not using uh, that weapon. Over the days and weeks and months and years, all the dust in the community will be on that weapon. But if you're going to use the weapon, you have to now pick it up and dust it off and sharpen it and make the file to do the work on that sword. And that thing is clean, that thing is sharp, and that thing is powerful, and that thing now can defeat any enemy. All the enemies of, your, of progress in your life during these two, three days destroyed in Jesus' name. That's why it says shake. Shake, shake thyself from the doors. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. I'm sure you've seen uh, goats that are, you know, they have cords, they have something, they tie them in the neck. And while they tie them in the neck, they cannot move. They cannot make progress. And the same thing with man. Once you are tied, once you are tied with a cord, with a rope, with a chain, all you can do is to be merry going round, just within or around the pole you are tied to. But now, this is the time. All those cords will be broken. Amen. Amen. Because it says, Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. I come to tell you that from today, you will be awakened. You will benefit. And you begin to cultivate a progressive life, a positive life, a powerful life, a life that cannot be hindered by anything on earth, anything from anywhere. Tonight, as I said, the message is awakened. Awakened beneficiaries cultivating Delightful excellence. Now, let's come to number one. Number one is the A there. What's that A? Awake to advance through the advocate. Awake to advance through the advocate. B there is build the bridge with the beloved. If you don't build a bridge, you know, in life, 
the success is far away and there is a gulf between you and the success between you and the power between you and the finance between you and the progress and we need to build a bridge and how do we build the bridge the beloved will help as we interact connect with him and we build the bridge to everything we need. C is to cultivate the character of the conqueror. The character of the conqueror. You see, life, we have to conquer. You move from this stage to this stage because you have conquered. Now, a baby is born, and that baby sees everybody walking, everybody moving, and that baby says, I wish I could walk like them. And then the baby gets up, tries to walk, he falls. He needs to conquer the fear of falling. And then eventually he's able to walk, but quietly and slowly, but now he needs to run. And he says, I wish I can run. And there are impediments in the mind. The bones are there. The legs are there. He needs to conquer all those impediments. And then we go to school. I'm learning how to write the alphabet. And I cannot write the A, the way the teacher is writing. And I need to conquer the alphabet. And then to make the sentences, we conquer. I'm telling you that every area of life that we get to, and we're going to move forward, any area, no matter where you are now, at what level you are now, we need to conquer. And we do that by cultivating. We cultivate the character of the conqueror. And then life depends on decisions. And D there is to dedicate what decision for the deliverer. E, eliminate. You'll find... Before you can make any progress, there are things to eliminate. I'm dull, there's something I need to eliminate. I'm lazy, there's something I need to eliminate. I am retarded. I don't know how to work, and I don't know how to push myself and do what I need to do. There is something I need to eliminate before I can excel in any profession and in life, in the family, in the marriage, for the marriage to work well, I discover there are some things I need to eliminate so that I can excel in love, I can excel in affection, I can excel in the unity, in the family. The point is anyone who excels in life will find out there are things, this, 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 I need to eliminate and I can't do it myself. I do not have the power, the strength, the ability to eliminate them so I can excel and Emmanuel comes comes to my side. He says, I'm Emmanuel, God with us. And because with God all things are possible, he, Emmanuel, helps me, helps you to eliminate whatever you need to eliminate, and you will progress in life in Jesus' name. Did somebody there say amen? amen. Number one, number one, we're looking at a week. To advance through the advocate. Awake. Look at Romans chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 11 there. Romans chapter 13 verse 11. And that know him. The time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. It is high time to awake out of sleep. You want to be somebody in life. And for a nobody to become somebody. For a known entity to become somebody. We have to wake up. If I keep on sleeping, if I'm always tired, if I'm always weary, if I am afraid to get myself dedicated to my calling, then I cannot reach the place I'm dreaming to reach. The first thing in your life 
is to say, I must, in this life, this single life of mine, I will be somebody. Am I talking to somebody there? Somebody. Where is there somebody there? I said, where is there somebody there? For you to be that somebody, God created everyone for something. Have you noticed? Everything in life, the grass, God created that for a purpose. The sun, God created that for a purpose. The moon, God created that for a purpose. The seas, the ocean, God created that for a purpose. Anything, everything in the animal world, in the vegetable world, God created for, every, for something. And you in particular, you in particular, you are not an accident. Anybody might tell you, you are just born. Uh -uh. God has a purpose for sending you to this world and to your country and to your community. And that purpose can only be fulfilled when you are awake out of sleep. You just wake up and say, what have I done? All these many years that have occupied the place where I am, what have I contributed? What have I done? What have I studied? What have I retained? And what have I achieved? And that is the moment in your life, like tonight, like you say, enough is enough. Somebody help me out. I said, enough is enough. Enough is enough. Look back. Look at the journey. Look at the many years we have spent. What have I done? What have I achieved in my inner life, personal life, in my physical life, my health, in my educational life, my studies, in my professional life, what I lay my hands on, in my family life, in my community life, in my social life. What have I contributed? Enough is enough. I will awake. I will awake. I said I will awake. It says awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. It talks about salvation there. Salvation there simply means our forgiveness because we feel guilty, and the guilt slows us down. Condemnation slows us down. Think of it like this. You have a bag, big bag, that is hung on your back, through your, on your neck. And every bad thing you do, there's a pebble that is thrown inside that bag. And every bad word you speak, there's a pebble thrown inside that bag. And every anger, every violence throws another pebble there. And at least one pebble has been thrown into that bag one day, at least one. Second day, in one week, at least seven pe pebbles are there. In one month, at least 30, 31 pebbles are there. In one year alone, you're thrown into that bag, hanging on your back, 365 pebbles. By the time you live 20 years, 30 years, that bag is heavy, and it is heavy with guilt and condemnation. And now to run the relay race, you slow everybody down. And to run a marathon race, you, stay, you cannot do that because of the bag of pebbles at your back. That's why it says, but salvation is near. There is a hand in heaven. There is a power from heaven that will come and remove that back totally with all the pebbles there, and it can happen tonight. I said it can happen tonight because now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. And as you believe the Lord tonight, that bag, he will remove that bag. 
all of a sudden, you're forgiven. All of a sudden, you're free. And you're free like a feather. It's like I can run. From tonight, you can run. From tonight, you can walk. From tonight, you can act. Because it depends on activity. And if we're not activated from within, what can we do? It is Christ that comes, a savior, a redeemer, and he has the power, he has the wisdom, he has the love to remove that bag of pebbles in your life, on your heart, in your soul tonight, in Jesus' name. Say amen. Look at First John, First John chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 1. In First John chapter 2, verse 1, it says, My little children, don't misunderstand the language. And John writing this was about 95, 96 years of age. And he looks at you know people who are 60 and 50 or 40 or 20, and he calls them my little children. He's been born again, he's been saved, it's got to salvation long, long time. And so he talks to people who just got their salvation about 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and he says, My little children, is actually talking to you, talking to me, and talking to everyone. He says, My little children, these things. I write unto you that ye should not sin. What's he saying there? He's saying your business on earth, your full-time job is not to sin. Your full-time job is to discover what God has created you for. Your full-time job is to awake and be active in what the Lord is calling you to do. He said, now, there are people, they leave the ordained, assigned, full-time job to do good and to live. And to help other people, they leave that full-time job and they go into the full-time job of sinning. And so he says, little children, God did not create you to get into the full-time job of sinning and sinning and sinning. He says, little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, uh -huh, it's coming to you now. It says, if any man sin, and the bag at his back is having pebbles thrown there every day. If any man sin, it says, we have an advocate. We have an advocate. He is the one to plead for us before God. He says, yes, I know he's a sinner. Yes, I know she is a sinner. But look at the mark on my hand. I was crucified for him. I was crucified for her. Look at the pain that I went through, the agony that I went through. He said, the advocate of Jesus Christ, he says, because of me, because of my sacrifice, because of my suffering, for him, for her, forgive her. Forgive him, and forgiveness will come to you tonight. Freedom will come to you tonight. It says, if any man sin, we have an advocate for the Father. And now he mentions his name, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And that's how you advance in life. You awake to realize I need the advocate. I need his redemption. I need his forgiveness. I need his freedom. I need his power, the power of his grace to get me up and to get me moving. Praise the Lord tonight. He will give you that salvation. That forgiveness he'll give you tonight. Now, what next? The next thing is B, beneficiaries. Build the bridge with the beloved. Build the bridge 
with the beloved. There was a time when in our state here, long, long time, there were rivers that divide us between where we were living, where our forefathers were living, and the next town. At the next, what we call state now, which they were not calling states at that time. They knew of the existence of those towns and cities. But the rivers were so deep and so wide, nobody could cross until the idea came to somebody. That we can build a bridge between this city, your city, and that city another city and they began to make the construction that time whatever you had you have uh, crops in the farm that you have a uh, uh, kind of uh, cultivated and you want to ship it you want to go to that other market and give them the seed and the crops there you have some things for mage that they need in other places you want to go and benefit the people in other towns how could you do that? No bridge. And then they began to construct the bridge. And how were the bridges there? If you want to cycle, you can cycle over and get there. If you want to uh, use a mole and animal and carry all your crops, and you can go on that bridge. If you're using a car, you can go now on that bridge. The point I'm making is for you to have the benefit of what Christ has done to be connected with God. You cannot travel to God by yourself. But he, he came from heaven to earth and he went from earth to heaven. And he's the only one that can make the bridge and make the way for you. A holy God, so holy, spotlessly holy, brazenly holy, but a man, yourself, a woman, so sinful, deeply sinful, dirty, and there is no connection between the sinful man and the holy God until Christ became the bridge. And he says, did you see the vehicle going on the bridge and going to the other side and become the bridge? And his hands are long and wide enough. And your wage, he can take your wage. And then believingly, convincingly, persuasively, you now come over the bridge. You see those cars? As they pass over the bridge, they're not going so slowly as if uh, the bridge may break. They, need, they know that that bridge is strong enough to take the wedge of the vehicle. And Christ, the bridge between man and God is strong enough. It will take your weight. I said it will take your weight. No matter what you have done. No matter where you are coming from. No matter whether you knew him before you are just knowing him. To, see, there were some people, they didn't know the bridge had been constructed. They just saw the bridge today for the first time. And the bridge will not say, uh-huh, you're not qualified to come on this bridge because you are just knowing it today. They go on the bridge. The day they know about that bridge. And the same thing, Christ is a bridge between man and God. And even if you are carrying that for the first time today, you will go on that bridge. I said you will grow, go on that bridge. Look at 1 Peter chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 18. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, for Christ also, as one suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, the just for you, the unjust, that he might bring us to God. He is the bridge. He is the only one qualified, only one strong enough, only one mighty and powerful enough that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. 
I come to tell you today that Christ has already finished the work of being a, a bridge for you, for me, and for everyone. And you will go on that bridge to the achievement and to the place and to the progress and to the success you are looking for in Jesus' name. Say good amen. amen. Look at number three there. Number three is cultivate the character of the conqueror. Cultivate the character of the conqueror. The word to conquer is to overcome. Before you came here tonight, look at the sky, look at the rain, and then something was saying to you, should I go, shouldn't I go? The people who didn't conquer the weather, they didn't come today. Maybe they'll come tomorrow. But you, because you conquered the weather, that's why you are here tonight. In life, we're about to go to school, and the child is crying. Child, why are you crying? I don't want to go to school. I don't want to go to school. That child has not conquered the attachment he or she has with the mother. How can I live without my mother? How can I live without staying, without being connected inseparably with my mother? And that child that has not conquered that attachment to the mother will never go to school because the mother has what to do. And the mother is not going to follow her, follow him to school. But one day, after she had cried and cried and cried, then she conquered that attachment. And then we'll say, bye-bye, mommy. I'm going to school. It is that conquering that releases anyone to go and make progress. In life, after we finish school, they tell us the workplace is terrible. The workplace, you know, they do this, they do this. You cannot survive. And although you have certificate, the fear of Going to the public is like being thrown to the lion's den. And as long as you have that, you will not do anything and make progress. And they introduce a profession to you, a business to you. And uh, they say, do this until you conquer. The fear of being in that place you're not going to make any progress now. They say that the in thing now in doing anything is computer science. And then you say, I, I barely went through school and I cannot learn anything new now. You cannot teach the old dog any new trick. And as you believe that, and you do not conquer the fear of learning something new, your life will just be on a plateau. Your life will be there. What brings us up, what leads us up is to discover, I conquered the fear of going to school when I was young. I conquered the fear of learning mathematics or chemistry or physics when I was in secondary school. I conquered the fear of taking that course because it was all strange to me. I conquered the fear of traveling beyond my village so as to get a higher education. Now, I've seen that everything I achieved in life I conquered, and now the next step. Somebody there is going to the next step. I said somebody there is going to the next step. Higher ground. Higher ground. And greater achievement. If we're going to get to that higher ground, no matter how that thing is, all we need is to conquer. And I came to tell you here tonight, you'll be a conqueror. But you cultivate the character of the conqueror. How do I cultivate that? Do 
what you fear to do. do you look at that fear in the face. Don't deny the fear. I fear traveling. I fear getting on an aeroplane. I fear doing that new job. I fear looking at somebody eyeball to eyeball and asking what I want to ask. I fear making any plan to move forward. Do what you fear to do. Not only that, do the hard things first. Do the hard things first in your life. In your profession, you have a lot of things to do. Some are simple. Some are moderate. Some are very tough. Some are almost impossible to do. And you say, for me, other people might have done it. It's undoable now. If you're going to really cultivate the character of the conqueror, you do the hard things first. And you do it early in the morning. When you wake up in the morning, your brain is fresh. Life is fresh. And your strength is fresh. And it's at that early time that when you are fresh, you tackle, you attack. That difficult thing first. If you go through life like that, you'll be developing and you'll be cultivating the character of the conqueror. And then when you have to take a decision, a decision for Christ, a decision to say, I'm going to link up with Christ. It's going to be my savior. You've never done that. You'll be thinking, what will my friends say? What will my people say? You'll be thinking, does that mean I'm going to now say that Christ is the helper of my life? That thing you fear to do. To conquer and to become a conqueror, you cultivate the character of the conqueror. You're afraid do it anyhow. You think it's hard? Do it anyway. And you think that this is tough, and I need a top mind. Go ahead, and while you are doing it, the top mind will come to you. You will be tough. I will be tough. You'll do it in your life in Jesus' name. Look at Romans chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 37. It says, nay, in all these things, in all these things we've never done. In all these things we've never accomplished. In all these things we've never attempted. In all these things that seem hard and difficult and impossible to achieve. In all these things that confront me and make me afraid as if I will not be able. It says, in all these things, we're more than conquerors. We're more than conquerors. We're more than conquerors. We're more than conquerors. Look at that person that is just sitting down. When he should rise up and go to work, is less than a conqueror. Look at that person that ought to speak a word and do good in life, but he, his mouth is short, his heart is fearful, and his palpitating is less than a conqueror. Look at that person that ought to say no to something that will destroy his life, and is trembling and fearful. He cannot say no. It's less than a conqueror. But today, the spirit of the conqueror will come in your heart. You will rise up like a conqueror. You will believe like a conqueror. You will achieve like a conqueror. And you will go forth and do what you had never been able to do before, like a conqueror in Jesus' name. How do we become conquerors like that? It says, through him that loved us. Through him that loved us, how? It's known people like us, always afraid, and he helps them. It's known people, always reticent, retarded, not wanting to do anything. 
and he helped them because he loved them. His known people that were always pinned down by their problems and they never can rise to get anything done, he helped them. His known students like us that feared, we feared the teacher and we feared his subject. And yet, I need this subject because if I don't need to have this subject, I cannot get to the profession I need to get to. But any time I'm about to go to that class, I'm afraid of that teacher. I'm afraid of that subject. And Christ has helped other people like you, like me. And because he loves us, the way he loved them, he says, Come on, I've solved this kind of problem before. Come on, I've relieved and received people like you before. I did it for them. He will do it for you. Amen. Your life will turn around today. And the Lord himself will cultivate you, will develop you, and develop the character of the conqueror in you, in Jesus' name. And then you'll be able to say, nay. What does that mean, nay? That means no. Will you keep on sitting down, nay? No. Will you keep on wrapping up yourself and you are wrapped up with fear? You cannot rise up and do anything, nay. Will you remain a mediocre through life? not having the courage and not having the character of the conqueror? Nay. Will you remain backward all your life? Uh-uh. Nay. Somebody help me shout, nay. nay. You will not remain the way you came. Courage will come to you. Positive, practical, powerful character will come to you. Nay, in all these things, it puts everything together. All these things, we are more, I'm going to make it personal, you are more than a conqueror. What are you? You. I said you. I said you. You are more than a conqueror through him that loved you. I come to D now. D is dedicate with decision for the deliverer. Dedicate of decision for the deliverer. Somebody is sick and the doctor is waiting for him. And the doctor is ready. And we know this doctor expert in his field but the person who is sick needs to get up he knows where the doctor is he knows where to get him he knows how to describe his problem the only thing is he has the problem of indecision rise up now let's go there the person who is to take you there is ready i'm still thinking about it the sickness is getting worse. His pains are getting worse. And his condition is getting worse. Rise up. The doctor is waiting. We need to get to him now. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. That indecision can kill that man. It's not the disease that killed him. It's not the pain that killed him. It's not because there's no doctor that killed him indecision killed him but a person who knows how to take the right decision the deliverer is there the savior is there emmanuel is there god with us is waiting for me and i need to give my heart this heart is weak this heart does not have the right flow of the blood for life into that heart and out of that heart. I need to give my heart to him. You need a decision. And that decision, you should not waste time. You dedicate your life with decision for 
the deliverer. Look at Joel chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 14. Joel chapter 3 verse 14. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. Multitudes in the valley of decision. And there are people that remain in that valley. They never take a decision to rise up from that valley and come to the mountain top of the transforming power of the Lord. Multitudes, like we're here tonight, like we're there all over the world, and we know one thing is needful, that you will take a decision now, because the deliverer is here. He has never lost any case. He has never lost anyone, and whosoever comes unto him, he will no wise reject whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved and he's saying I'm waiting for you where are you I'm waiting for you where are you and all you need is a decision in your heart I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back I have decided the cross before me and the world behind me. No turning back, no turning back. Though my friends misunderstand and they say, what are you doing? Please, I have my life to live. You cannot help me get to the place I want to get to. And this is Christ my Savior. This is Christ my Lord. I have decided to follow him. No turning back, no turning back. You will get out of the valley of mediocrity tonight in Jesus' name. The, the, the valley of the defeated, you will come out tonight. You'll say, I decide. I decide. I decide. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Tonight, the Lord will turn your life around. Things will change. I think things, I said things will change. Because as you decide and you put action to that decision. Action to that decision. You come out of the valley, the valley of despair, the valley of despondency, the valley of defeat. And you come, you say, Christ, I hear that you want to save me. I come, I come, I come. It will save you tonight. It will change your life tonight. Out of the valley will come to victory. I come to victory. I, I, I come to victory. Welcome. You will not be disappointed in Jesus' name. He will look in at the next E. Eliminate to excel through Emmanuel. Eliminate. Well, uh, in the example, and our supervisors. And this uh, fellow actually knows enough to pass the exam by himself. And so he didn't have confidence that he could pass the exam. So he wrote some things and put it in the pocket. And when we got to the exam, as the rest of us were busy writing, writing, he looked here and there and see if the vigilator would not see anything. And he brought out what he was, what he had written. He started copying. He just said, what's that? And then caught him and took him somewhere. They didn't allow him to write that paper and the rest of the papers, and he missed out. Now, he was lucky that he came back to school, but he had to repeat that class. And now, he told himself, if I'm going to make it, and I want to make it, I need to eliminate this character, this habit, 
And there is private thing that I always do, thinking I need that to help myself. What I thought would help me, hurt me. And now we eliminate that. In your life, as we go through life, you see things we do, it's not as me, it's not about hurting other people alone. Those things become hurdles, stumbling blocks on your way. Because what you sow is what you reap. Your joy is not there. Happiness is not there. And a smooth journey is not there because of all those things that you do. You do it maybe privately or publicly, but your heart is kind of deformed. Your heart does not have confidence anymore. You even feel now, if I don't cheat, I cannot make it. If I don't steal, I cannot make it. If I don't lie, I cannot make it. If I don't uh, oppress other people and get what belongs to other people, I cannot make it. The thing has made your life degenerate. And you want to now say, I'm going to succeed in life. And I want all these things that have been stumbling blocks in my life, in my spirit. I want them gone. That's what we mean by eliminate. You eliminate everything that is not helping you. You eliminate everything that is hurting you. And then the Lord will lift you up to excellence. I said the Lord will lift you up to excellence. And his name is Emmanuel. His name is Emmanuel. Shout that name for me to hear. And the meaning is God with us. As you come to Christ today, and every evil of your life, we, you cannot remember everything. Just bundle them together and say whatever it is. Character, behavior, conduct, habit, private, public. What I do to um, show other people that I'm a lanky a guy and I'm proud of what I am, all that. Bring everything to the Lord because those things are not helping you. That the evil he wants eliminated out of your life. And Emmanuel will take over your life. Emmanuel will take over your life. Don't bother, don't worry what people call you. They call you a good boy. They don't know. They don't know the things you do that makes you feel ashamed. And you say, I hope people will not know this. They say, that girl is a good girl. That lady, a good lady. That man, a good young man. They, what do they know? They don't know you, but you know yourself. And you know that if those things come out, you might land in jail. But tonight, the Lord can help and eliminate all the evil. And then your past will be forgiven and you'll be set free and you will have excellence in life. Emmanuel will make you excel. Look at Matthew chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 21. Matthew chapter 1, verse 1. Verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for because he shall save his people from their sins. He shall save. Tonight is your night. I say tonight is your night. Look at verse 23 there. Verse 23, it says, Behold, a virgin shall be a child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. God will be on your side. 
the judge of all the earth will come to your side. And because the judge of all the earth is now with you, you will not be judged anymore. The helper of heaven and earth will come to your side. Every load you want to carry, he'll say, I'm here, Emmanuel, God with us. The healer of all the sicknesses on earth will be by your side over there. And he says, be not afraid, I am here. Emmanuel, healer, God with us. The deliverer, he'll be with us. He'll be with you there. If you're tormented by any demon, any devil, any evil spirit, Emmanuel will come to your aid. And he will set you free because he is Emmanuel, God the deliverer, God the healer, God the savior. He will be by your side. You make the decision tonight because everything hangs on your decision. And you see, now I understand Christ the advocate, Christ. Beloved, Christ the conqueror, Christ the deliverer, Christ Emmanuel is here to set you free, is here to forgive your sin, is here to set you free from every evil in your life. Give me a good amen. amen. This is the time, your time, it's about. And eyes closed. You want to take that decision tonight? You're not dilly-dallying. You're not wavering here and there. You know that Christ is the Savior. And Christ is the source of your forgiveness and freedom. And is ready now to save you. It's about eyes closed. You want that forgiveness? Is forgiveness heaven's forgiveness? That freedom, heavenly freedom, and you want all the evil in your life, all the sins you ever committed to be cleansed off and taken off. Christ is here, right here. He wants to do that for you. Raise up your hand if you want that forgiveness. God bless you there. Thank you very much. You want that forgiveness. You want that freedom. You want that salvation. You want that breaking of every yoke in your life to set you forth and make you move forward. Raise up that hand there. Raise up that hand there. Young man, young woman, boy, girl, a student, anywhere you are, is looking at you now in the valley of decision. Decide, decide, decide right now. Here are my Lord. If you're raising up your hand, please stand up. You're raising up your hand. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you there. You're raising up your hand. Please uh, stand up. And then I'm going to pray with you. And then he'll take the body, the agony of sin. He'll take the condemnation of sin. He'll take all that away from your heart. He'll set you free. And then you'll begin the journey of awake to be a beneficiary. Able now to cultivate delightful excellence. Keep on standing and praying for you now. Keep on standing and praying for you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your love. You so loved everyone in the world. You gave your only begotten son that whosoever will believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. I pray for all these who are standing. I'm asking uh, your forgiveness, your salvation will come to them now in Jesus' name. And I pray that freedom that will free them from all the chains and shackles of life in the past, Lord, grant them uh, that freedom in Jesus' name. And I pray and they make that decision now to be with the deliverer. Deliver everyone. Solve every problem. And Lord, I pray, Emmanuel, God with us, Savior with us, I pray all the evils in their lives 
eliminate the hammer in Jesus name we know it's done we know you have answered my prayer their prayer we know they are saved and forgiven and set free let the joy of salvation of freedom of forgiveness be in every heart right now in Jesus name I pray God bless you. That amen is wonderful. Say that amen again. Yeah. Now, our counselors are there. Uh, so, um, they'll interact with you now. Interact with them. Fellowship with them. And, uh, you know, whatever they ask, you know, respond to them truthfully. And the grace of God will never stop in your life in Jesus' name. We'll call on a pastor who's uh, in charge of this uh, to lead us before I come to do the final prayer. Something great has happened this evening. That is transformation. It's as simple as that. So, I welcome you into the family of God. Our counselors are around you there. They are there to take down your details. You need this information to help you further in the faith. This is the beginning of a new journey for you. I congratulate you. Feel free to share your information. Make sure you give correct information. Once you take this step, you are telling the whole world you are a new creature. New creatures tell the truth. So, you give us correct information. Exactly the information that will help us to locate you at home, to locate you at school, to be able to share more of the love of our biggest daddy with you. He wants to connect with you. If you are online, what a glorious day, what a glorious decision you are taking this moment. A link is being shared. Click on that link and supply all the needed information. If you are on the radio, a number is being scrolled Send your details to that number as well. All this will help us to lead you further in the faith. Don't forget, no our class, biggest no daddy is coming back. And is coming back with anointing. Anointing will break every yoke. Anointing will break every yoke. If I were you, you begin to pray now. Pouring your heart to God. Telling God what you want him to do for you. Your desire. Your expectation. The exact thing you want God to do for you in this glorious global convocation. Don't allow me to distract you. And don't walk away yet. You are here for something important. This weekend. And our daddy is well loaded to bring God's blessings upon our lives. All our new friends, new converts, make sure that you are doing that very, very quickly. Supply all the required information. Cancel us. It's not a preaching time. Just get the details. Get the contact from our wonderful new friends in Christ so that we can help them further in their faith and give them some of the wonderful things our biggest daddy has prepared for them. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure you are giving us very correct information. And those who are not doing that, have been born again before, you need something deeper. You need something higher. You need something greater. Do not allow this moment to pass you by. Commune with God. And if you are written those things down, 
Why not go through them and connect your faith with those requests? Because this is going to be a new beginning for you. Can we get signals from the stands? Supervising counselors, let us know how far you are gone with the counseling. Very quickly, please, give us information so that we know that we are done with that segment and then our biggest daddy is back on this pulpit to lead us into supernatural experience. Thank you. I'm waiting for feedback. God bless you. Our daddy is coming back now. I want you to be upstanding awaiting the anointing of God upon your life. Welcome, sir. Amen. We're going to pray now. And whatever problem you have, the Lord is by your side to take it away. Supernatural experience. Who is going to have a testimony? Amen. I say amen for you. Amen for your miracle tonight. If you are sick, the Lord will heal you. If you are blind, he'll open your blind eyes. If you are lame, you'll rise up and walk. If you brought anybody deaf and dumb, the Lord will perform the miracle. Their ears will open. Their tongue will speak out. Pile, the Lord will take the pile away. Whatever problem, internal problem, external problem, Emmanuel, God with us, will solve your problem. Raise up one hand and lay the other hand where you have the challenge. And when you hear the final image, you must check up yourself because a miracle is going to be deposited in your life there. Father, in Jesus' name, we all come before you. You are the God of power. The God of miracles, the God of signs and wonders. I pray, Lord, come to the side of everyone and touch them with your miracle. Those who are sick, any sickness in the brain, in the mind, in the ear, in the eyes, any problem. Lord, I pray, touch them, heal them in Jesus' name swelling in any part of the body and near there i command that and near and i command that swelling come out in jesus name yeah. you're having respiratory problem asthma you cannot breathe very well i pray that the miracle power of the lord will touch you right now yeah. be healed in jesus name Pile, vanish away. Lord, I pray, blindness, vanish away. I pray, all those things walking about in the body, in the head now, and then at the back now, in the leg now, I command that thing moving about, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray everywhere now, to my right, to my left, and to the front, to the back, everywhere Miracles in Jesus' name. Online, in every congregation where our young people are gathered together and we're connected now, anywhere, or people in their homes, they are watching on their search. I pray that miracle will flow into every life right now. Emmanuel, God with us, healer with us, deliverer with us, Perform the miracle for everyone. Joy in your heart. Joy in your life. 
and joy of being a recipient of miracle healing happen to you right there right now thank you lord because i know you have answered it is done it is done in jesus name i pray wonderful your amen is so good that the miracle of god must follow that amen check up yourself you see what the lord has done and he has put testimony in your mouth